this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the teardrop monument for the 9-11 victims. It has every victim's name from 9-11. And this was out of grad to no other country has done more for the United States than Russia. This is actually a monument that nobody knows about. Nobody's talking about in the mainstream news. Russia actually built this monument here in New Jersey for the United States. And nobody on the mainstream news even talked about it. I think Bush was in office and, you know, he never actually talked about it. I mean, this is like a Statue of Liberty. And, we, you know, the Statue of Liberty is well known. Who else has done this? This is a teardrop for all the victims of 9-11. Now, after 9-11, uh, you know, Russia felt really bad what happened to the United States. And now they're coming out of Russia saying, hey, you know, 9-11 was probably an inside job. I mean, there's a lot of truthers out there who believe that. And when you look at the evidence now, it looks very suspicious that 9-11 was probably an inside job. Well, anyways, people suffered. And regardless, Russia built this monument for those victims. And, you know, there was a taxi driver who drove past this place. And he's like, nobody knows about this. There's a few people to go to, but it is in New Jersey. Overlooking this area here. But this is a beautiful monument. This takes millions of dollars to build this. Uh, this is a very tall building. It's even like a couple hundred feet tall. So, just so you know, uh, you know, Russia is an unnecessary enemy. After 9-11, you know, they, they're against terrorism and all those jihadists and all that. Uh, we could have very well uh, been great allies and fought them together and, you know, made a, a, a better world. But, you know, unfortunately, there, there's uh, some bankers or whatever and, you know, they don't like the deals that they're getting. They want better deals. And now the relations between Russia and the United States have totally deteriorated. And it's really scary when you see the leaders there in power saying, we need to be tougher on Russia. And, you know, forget that garbage. The World War III is not an option. World War III means both the world, the countries, everybody will be annihilated except that maybe that 0.2% that gets one of these deep bunkers that a bunker buster can't reach. What difference is it going to make? When they come up 50 years later, there's it's still going to be so much radiation you won't be able to survive maybe eventually there'll be a couple dome cities uh, actually the Russians they're far more involved they have far more underground capacity where they have cities where they can fit hundreds of thousands of people in an underground bunker but let me tell you there's not nothing like that in the United States there might be only one or two places in the United States where the elites can go there's one place maybe in Missouri in the Ozarks and there's another place in Colorado. And it's well known that actually that uh, the United States has decided to move another base into Colorado. And they got a lot of bunkers over there. But that's that's about the only two spots left. I mean, if you're in Florida, you're fucked. Part of my French. Uh, there's no bunker because there's you can't go very far. You're going to hit water. So unless you're in a mountain, I mean, all the talk that's going on. You can hear the the rhetoric. There's only maybe one or two Republicans that might be able to work with Russia and calm down the rhetoric. Maybe Ron Paul. He he doesn't look like he, you know, he's not going to go all out. Uh, he could probably work something out with them. Not very popular in the polls right now. He, Ron Paul is only around five percent. Um, Hillary Clinton. I just don't think. Uh, I don't think she's going to improve the relations at all. And the way it's looking for Hillary, I, I don't see her even making it uh, with all that email Benghazi mess. I don't see her grabbing it. Bernie Sanders, he does not seem like a war hawk. You just got to wonder, he is a dual citizen, Israeli citizen. So, you, you know, you got to wonder, you know, whose side he's really on. Nothing against Israel, but, you know... America first, you know. You know, then we take care of our allies. But World War Three is not an option. Look, the relations need to get better.
uh, Donald Trump, he has a working relationship with Putin, so there might be something there. I know that Trump had a uh, pageant there for Miss World in Moscow, so he's met all the leaders over there. He's tough, but you know, he's respected, so... I mean, I, I'm not sold on Trump yet, uh, but at least he's, you know, he's got something to at least say that he's a good businessman, and I think more leaders would respect him than what we have. So, look, Russia's not bad, you know, they're not, you know, they're not innocent either, but there's not a choice in this matter. We need to work with the Russians, and they could be a decent, good ally. Um, you know, we just need to stay out of their business, stay off their border. Ukraine, I mean, look, they owned it for 500 years. That's part of their history. So, look, how I look at it is, if the United States would not have destabilized Ukraine, Ukraine would have never lost Crimea. The Russians never would have had an excuse to go in there and take it. But since we destabilized the country, kicked out who the people elected, and... We should have never done that. We, we believe in democracy, right? We believe in people that are elected. We should not be supporting people that are not elected by its people. Porkoshenko, I mean, he's destroyed his own country. I mean, now you can't even speak against what's the policy is you could get serious jail time. I mean, what happened to the truth? Here's the truth. It's right in front of you. Look, they're not bad. What other country has done this for the United States?